Wow. We finally got it. Shout out to Brian McFarlane for breaking this down. We finally got the details of Rashad Bateman's deal. And man, this is like even better than I thought it would be for the Baltimore Ravens. When it first came out that Rashad Bateman had agreed to a contract extension with the Baltimore Ravens, and remember, I, I was shocked. I was like, whoa, that is insane. That is crazy. That's, that, that's crazy, man. Um, but then my guy Spencer, he said that he had heard that it was a three-year deal worth $15 million. And when I saw that, I was like, whoa, whoa, hold up now. Are you sure you saying that it's five mil per year and you're not saying it's a three-year, $15 million and $15 million per year? And I know that would be a big number for bait. But I was like, well, because there's, there's no way that he agreed to that. There's no way the Ravens got him for that much, right? And when we look at it uh, from Brian McFarlane's breakdown, he said it is a two-year extension that amounts to a three-year, $15.25 million deal. <laughs> Still, still, heist, heist of the century. Eric DaCosta walked in there. He ain't even had no ski mask on, man. He just walked in there. I'm taking it. Wow. Well, let's get into the details of Rashad Bateman's new deal with the Baltimore Ravens. We're going to get into all the financials. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on so you do not miss out a single video. And leave a like on the video. Helps out out a whole lot. It helps out a ton. <laughs> I love y'all so much, and I, and I just appreciate y'all so much. I appreciate how y'all make this so fun. Y'all really do with y'all comments, with everything that y'all be saying. Cause y'all 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 got it, man. Y'all got. It. I love y'all so much, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all every single day. Thank you. Now getting into the details. So. Brian McFarlane said it's just 12.8 mil in new money. He said the deal includes 4.5 mil in guaranteed money. That's it. 4.5 mil in guaranteed money. Wow. And he said a signing bonus of three point about 3.5 mil. And his 2024 base salary is a little over one mil. It's one mil fifty five thousand. That is his base salary this upcoming season. My goodness, this is just such a modest deal uh, for Rashad Bateman to take. Um, but like he did talk about in his interview on Glenn Clark Radio, uh, he talked about it felt like a fresh start. And with this deal, it really does feel like a fresh start for sure. Um, now let's take a look at it, the breakdown. So in 2024. Um, base salary again, one million fifty-five thousand. But again, he did get the the signing bonus of uh, about three point five mil. So that's his, that's his bread and whatnot. So that's that's cool. Um, uh, so that that's the first year. Now, um, the second year, because the first year, like they uh, they obviously not gonna cut him. They obviously not gonna cut him this year. He ain't going nowhere. That which is fine, which is good. Um, but. The second year, his base salary it goes to three point seven, uh, yeah, three million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So three point seven five mil. That's his base salary next year. Still extremely low, extremely low. And like I've continued to say, hopefully, when we look at this deal this year, and when we look at it next year, we're like, man, Rashad Bateman. Oh boy, that boy gonna ask for some more money after this. Because that would mean that he was outperforming this deal by far. But anyway, second year, base salary, 3.75 mil. Uh, and the dead money would be two about 2.3 mil. So 2,296,667. 2, so about 2.3 mil. Uh, if they were to cut or trade him. If. But again, if you were to do that, you would get you can get about 2.9 mil back in cap savings if you were to cut or trade them and only have 2.3 million dead money so yeah that's that wouldn't be bad so that and that's thinking worst case scenario worst case scenario it doesn't work out worst case scenario ravens want to move on rashad bateman wants to move on they can do it and it, it there wouldn't be no big penalties it wouldn't be no. It wouldn't be a big deal. Then you look at the. And hopefully that doesn't happen. 
again, I'm just talking about worst case scenario. But then you look at the last year, last year of the deal the, for 2026. His base salary is 6.5 mil. Again, a lot of times the way that contracts are set up, they are backloaded. So in the first couple of years, the, the, the beginning of the contracts, that's when they the cap hits are a lot lower, significantly lower than they would be on the back end. Um, so, yeah, but with this one, it is backloaded, but it's still nothing. The last year of his deal, uh, his base salary is 6.5 mil. That's it. 6.5 6 mil. Now, the dead money... If the Ravens were to cut or release Rashad Bateman, it would only be 1.1 mil. So $1,148,334. That would be the dead money. And the, the, the cap savings, that if they were to cut or release Rashad Bateman in the last year of his deal, the cap savings would be 6.5 mil. Exactly what his base salary would be. This deal is one of the most team-friendly deals that I have ever seen, ever. And it's just, when you look, I, I know people say, oh, well, Rashad Bateman, he don't deserve a big deal yet. He hasn't done anything in the league yet. All right, cool. But still, for him to take this, and I know there was the whole mix-up with uh, that he, he wasn't even eligible for a fifth-year option, and that's that's very significant, man. That's extremely significant because that changes everything right there. The fact that he couldn't even get a fifth year option because he did not show up to training camp the first couple of days. He showed up late. So that like negated his fifth year option. But last year when he did that, uh, when that happened, <laughs> that's when he changed agents. Well, I guess he already knew. He already knew. I guess maybe his maybe his agent gave him some bad information or something. Maybe he told him the wrong thing. Maybe there was a mix up, and his agent was probably like, "Look, babe, stay home. You you good? We got this." And then the Ravens told, "Oh, you want to stay home? You ain't gonna get this fifth year option. You're done, buddy." And he wasn't even eligible. So they were saying uh, Jeff Zrebic was saying that um, with Bateman, with him not even being eligible for the fifth year option. That after his four-year contract ran out, he would have been a restricted free agent. So Ravens would still, and I hate the term have his rights, but they will still have his rights regardless. So he was still, it was still, things would still be cheap. So with being an, a restricted free agent, that's when teams can place a tender on you. And they could place like a first round, second round, late round tender on you. Now, if whatever round tender they place on you, if a team, like say for instance, they put a first round tender on you. If a team, they can sign you to what's called an offer sheet. And if they sign you to an offer sheet, you can sign and be like, okay, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go there. But the team that you're currently on, like say for instance, the Saints, they wanted to sign Rashad Bateman to an offer sheet. So they signed him to one and the Ravens, they have an opportunity to either match that offer sheet within seven days, I believe. But if they don't match the offer sheet, then Rashad Bateman will go to the Saints. Now, if they place the if the Ravens place a first round tender on Rashad Bateman, then the Saints, since Rashad Bateman accepted that offer sheet and Ravens didn't match, the Saints would have to give the Ravens a first round draft pick. But I don't think people would give up a first round draft pick for Rashad Bateman. But hey, who knows what would have happened? But I mean, this that conversation doesn't even matter because he's not an exclusive rights free agent because they signed him to this contract extension. But again, it's just it's it's a crazy steal. It's a crazy steal. And Rashad Bateman, like, he really cause I wanna say he took one for the team, but he took one for himself too. He really did. He took one for himself. So I am um I'm just I I'm I'm really excited to see how this goes, man. And I'm really hoping for the best. I know Rashad Bateman, there's a lot of people that's doubting Rashad Bateman, uh, that don't have confidence in Rashad Bateman. And I can understand why, because of just how things have went thus far. But again, if we can get a healthy Rashad Bateman, and like Rashad Bateman said himself, he ain't get the opportunity to work with Lamar Jackson in the offseason. And he said, that's on him. He said, that's on him. That's on his injuries and stuff. So he knows. He gets it. But we, I mean, we all knew that too. We all knew that already. So, and like he said in an interview, like he feel like, with so many different situations, he said he could explain them to people, but he just seemed like he just really didn't want to. He said he could talk about 
uh, he could talk about the playbook. He could talk about the injuries. He could talk about this and that. But he said it is what it is. And I'm like, okay, yeah. So let 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 your play do the talking. Let your play do the talking. Get that connection going with Lamar Jackson again because they had it before. Man, his rookie year, they had it. They just got to get it back.